The price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. Black First Brothers and Sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I am your host, Afro Elite. Before we get started, please make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, leave a thumbs up, and share this on your various social media platforms because that helps the reach and growth of the channel. Thank you guys for watching and all of what you do. I sincerely appreciate it. Okay, so the music artists Chloe Bailey and Chris Brown are doing a music collab. They're doing, I guess, a song together and a video together that Chloe Bailey advertised on her Twitter, which led to a certain reaction from certain people, which we're going to discuss now. Let me show it to you guys. Okay, so this was what she had to say. Um, she goes to say, uh, second piece, how does it feel? I guess she did a, a first, how does it feel? You know, I'm not, you know, no, no diss or nothing like that. I just don't follow her that closely to know all of her work that well. You know, but no disrespect. She's talented. Um, so is Chris Brown. But they're doing a collab together. Okay. So that's cool. And um then you scroll up and you see you got some haters in the mix. Okay, this is Kaylee Williams, which I'm going to be completely honest. Prior to this, I did not know who Kaylee Williams was. Like, I've seen her around, but if somebody said anything like, oh, Kaylee Williams, I would have never been able to put a name to a face to the name. I wouldn't have been able to do it. She's not, um, I, I'm not familiar with her or her work at all. I think she was in, um, what, uh, Charlie's Angels or some, some type of TV show or project, something like that, that, that gives her some type of uh some i guess and that was that was years ago she hasn't kind of been on in a very long time i know that much not nearly to the degree of chloe or chris brown but this is what she had to say she says let him come out with his own record so genius so captivating it makes us all forget that he um uh, that he on all caps he beats women he won't uh, he can't, so he won't. So what does he do? He slowly creeps back into the mainstream by getting small nods from features on black women's merit. Okay. Uh, black women who are more talented, more worthy, but give him the okay. I am swatting the effing air right now. Garbage. Now, uh, but before we get into that, because Chris Brown actually had a reaction, and that's really what we're going to be discussing. Before we get into that, I'm going to say, um, just based off of that alone, that was very extra. Now, in in social media, is huh, let me see. The best way to say it is this very di the, is a duality about how people feel about Chris Brown um, on Instagram. Chris Brown has a lot of solid fans on Instagram. On Twitter, Chris Brown gets drug. He gets drug a little bit on both. He gets defended a little bit on both. But based off of what I see, based off of what I've seen, most of the people who like, like Chris Brown uh, are on the Instagram side. And the people who dislike Chris Brown, dis Chris Brown is on the Twitter side. Uh, you have some here and there, but... I have, I personally, I've never seen Chris Brown get drug on Instagram the way he does on Twitter. Twitter, just the, I, I guess the environment just hates Chris Brown. But I have the to say this, okay, and and, and we're gonna get into it after we play the response. She's saying that Chris Brown can't come out with his own record, um, and he's slowly creeping back into the mainstream. The situation with Chris Brown and Rihanna happened in 2009, 2009. Right now we're in 2023. Chris Brown has had hit records. His, he's had hit albums. Chris Brown, Chris Brown has been on. Chris Brown has not fell off. She's making it seem like Chris Brown fell off. Now, uh, I've said before that Chris Brown's situation with Rihanna, that's put a dark cloud on over him and over his career it stained his career uh permanently so to be honest because they're not letting that go but 
it's not as if he's creeping back into the mainstream. That's um, I, I don't know where she's been because nobody really knows about her or her work that well. No, she's not nobody's favorite anything. So for her to say that Chris Brown, and I'm not saying I'm super, super big, big Chris Brown um, fanatic, but for her to say that Chris Brown is creeping back into the mainstream through Chloe Bailey and no, just to Chloe Bailey, but uh, Chris Brown is bigger than Chloe Bailey. Chris Brown has had more records and, you know, hits and all that stuff than Chloe Bailey. Chloe Bailey really has only recently separated from her sister Haley. And when I say separated, I mean, they used to do a lot of the work together. They used to, you know, do a whole bunch of collabs. They came on as this sister duo. Now they're they kind of do their solo thing and then they kind of link up every now and then, but that's only happened within like the last few years or so. Chris Brown has been making hits after hits after hits and winning awards after awards after awards post the situation with Rihanna. And he didn't need any collabs, he didn't need to use um ta- more talented women to creep back into the net. It's never been that way. He did what he did. He faced his consequences and that was it. So she said that that was just off. And I felt like she was trying to do that to get some type of attention because that it just seemed like a little bit too much. I'm sure she doesn't like Chris Brown, but uh, that seemed like a little bit too much. It seemed like a very big reach to say that because you wouldn't think that, you know, that made sense to tweet unless you're trying to get like a big reaction which she did, and I'm going to show that for you to you guys right now. Now, this is a screenshot of Chris Brown, his Instagram story. He This is his reply to Kaylee Williams um, through his Instagram story, so I'm going to read it for you guys right here. And I we got this screenshot off of Twitter, because you know Twitter, you know, you know how they, how they do. So let me read it for you guys. He says, or he writes, if y'all still hate me for a mistake I made as a 17-year-old, please kiss my entire ass. I'm effing 33. I'm so tired of y'all running with this narrative. You weird-ass niggas are the same ones who tune in every week to see. I gotta scroll down a little bit. Every week to see Blue Face and Christine beat the F out of each other in front of the world, but that's okay. It's entertainment. Y'all can suck my um, private area disrespectfully. Then he goes on to say, where are the cancel culture with these white artists that date underage women, beat the F out of their wives, giving uh, bees AIDS? You know, I'm trying to keep the... um, profanity uh to a to a minimum in this one you know uh um so that's why i'm you know using filters and stuff okay oh that's right they are your buddies no more fake love for me stay out and it goes on to say stay out my way or get ran over simple as that none of you and i mean none of you niggas can f with me Okay, so now uh, the thing, I, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. I'm glad that he said something, and it may seem, and I'm, I'm just going to give my personal opinion. It may seem that Chris is doing the most. It, it may seem now Kaylee Williams, someone who is so much lower in like the entertainment realm, um, she's not nearly close to his status enough for him to even really have have said anything to be honest or have like went after oh suck my did you, you know y'all can't f with nah, that seems like uh, a, a bit much you know what i'm saying it seems like he overreacted now that doesn't mean what he said was not true what he said about okay you guys have had this cloud over me from when i was 17 and i'm 33 years old uh so like, come on, like what's going on? And then 
this a big double standard now the reason he brought up the blue facing christine situation is because not to i don't think he did it to throw shade towards them but i think he did it to say okay there's a really big double standard that you guys have when it comes to um men hitting women or entertainers hitting uh women or anything like that and i'm glad that he brought up the the white men because we're going to get into that and to be honest in a future video that i'm going to make i'm really going to get into this cancel culture thing because that doesn't apply to white people really at all but that i'm going to save that for another video but when it comes to uh what chris had said chris was correct i i fully agree with chris and i'm glad that he said it this way because a lot of times we have to we we tend to forget that artists are our people too artists get fed up too when i read what he had to say when i saw his reaction i i think to myself okay um chris brown is probably somebody who is very 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 fed up with the the situation with rihanna and chris brown being clouded over him that bit that being a stain on his career now it was not a stain on rihanna's career whatsoever in fact a lot of people including myself argue that the situation with rihanna and chris brown helped rihanna's career it propelled her as this like a uh, battered woman who overcame this abusive boyfriend and it, it you know it propelled her career and nobody is justifying people beating up people men hitting women women hitting men at all nobody's justifying that uh the situation that uh goes though that they both had uh abusive relationship to each other rihanna has admitted this similarly to the relationship between chris Chrisan and um blueface but it wasn't in the camera it wasn't funny it wasn't entertainment so then when chris brown beat rihanna up and those pictures were taken uh the narrative was pointed out like oh my god he he's jealous of her she's just so much better he's jealous of her so he just beat her up and years down the line we found out that that necessarily was not the truth but still some people have this kind of um hatred towards chris brown for that and it's uh it stems from the hatred towards black men and why i say that is because had Chris Brown, I'ma be honest, had Chris Brown been white, Chris Brown would not have had the stain on his relationship from him and Rihanna. I'm I'm and I'm saying that based off of the fact that they don't do that to white artists who have history of abuse or white actors, white athletes who have a uh, history of um abuse when it comes to women, they don't do that. They don't have that be a permanent, especially from a young age, 17 years old. That's never that's never a permanent stain on their career like that. So uh, it, it is because it's it's a lot of the anti-blackness in the Chris Brown hate. I will admit that it's a lot of the the feminism in, in the Chris Brown hate. So we're going to get into that. But I really want to talk about. um because because blueface made a reaction so i'm going to play blueface's reaction chris breeze young uh beat the yaki what's happening Cause, uh, look check it out i understand the frustration fool you know for me being in the situation i'm not even gonna trip on you because the message you trying to send is way off i get it you know bitch hit me it's funny, I hit her back, it's fuck blue face, so I totally get it, because that, that'll be the most irritating thing ever. But you got to play the cards that you was dealt. <clears throat> you want some, but they did it too. Why aren't you guys telling them anything type shit? It's like, bro, life don't work like that, man. You know, if we all go do a crime together, we're not all going to get the same time together. You hear me? You might get the most amount of time. We might not all say nothing. But we all went and did the crime, so we got to take the time. You, hear me? you want some? You guys are going to give me the most time, but they did it too. Like, judge, sentence them. Yeah, like, we ain't got nothing to do with that, bro. I mean, like, handle your candle, deal with your situation, how you deal with it. Only thing I disagree with is you yes, posting all these random white people and, and me and the bitch and trying to, like, distract from your thing you feel me like 
You gotta stand on it, care. Like if you beat the bitch up, shit, you beat the bitch up. Like, <laughs> oh god, like you scared right, to like. <laughs> yeah, like I get it. You want some R and B? You don't want to be seen as R and B, but oh um, god, yeah, you beat the Yaki, You gotta hey. I beat my bitch up, man. I, I ain't finna come on here and be like, well, Chris Brown did it 16 years ago, and and you guys let him still like perform at the BET Awards, and uh, I'ma sound like a, like a square guy. That's what I'ma sound like. And my last opinion is, girl, you beat up the wrong bitch. Yeah, you got you, <laughs> you got a bad judge. Like you feel me? We didn't all get the same judge. Kevin, yeah, I got a bitch. I mean, she gonna fight back, so I'ma get less time. You hear me? You beat you beat up a, <laughs> yeah you beat up the wrong bitch you beat up the bitch that just performed at the Super Bowl nigga like yeah like I'm sorry okay cool okay so my my thing my thing about what he had to say is this um I will address the whole finger pointed well they did it too that's um as as grown men we take accountability for our actions. I will say that. Now, I don't think that's really what Chris Brown was doing, especially when it came to Krishan and Blueface. Now, people have asked me my opinion on Krishan and Blueface. And to be honest, this is my first time ever really speaking, uh, especially on YouTube, about that situation. But I'm going to be honest, their relationship is extremely toxic. They have a very toxic relationship and it's played like, oh my God, it's so funny. It's so cool. And it's so cute. And it's really not. Um, I, to be honest, I was not feeling blue faces. Um, that I, I'm not, I, I don't like the blue, blue flay, blue, blue fate that whatever. The fuck thing. I don't like his, um, thing and Krishan's thing. I don't like that. Okay. I don't like their dynamics in their relationship. I don't think it sets a good image for black relationships. He's trying to play it off like, oh, you you talking about me and these random white folks and handle yours. Chris Brown has already dealt with the consequences and he's still dealing with the consequences. I feel that Chris Brown was bringing that up not to kind of deflect. I feel he was bringing that up to point out the hypocrisy and we're going to have to be honest we're in this very because because what blueface was doing was gaslighting that's that's what blueface was doing the entire time just gaslighting like oh no if we did the crime you know what i'm saying you just got to deal with it got to deal with it that's that he's gaslighting the situation there does need to be a conversation to be honest and i'm glad that chris brown said it maybe he was over the top but he was in the right lane he said what needed to be said because a lot of people in the industry get a pass where chris brown did not get a pass chris brown all that almost completely ruined his career chris brown um was never really the same after that because they're not allowing him to be the same now with blueface blueface is not doing nearly as much work as chris brown is doing um Blueface does not have nearly as much hits, nearly as big hits, nearly as many features. Blueface is never, and he is never going to be a Chris Brown. He is never in his entire career going to be a Chris Brown. The his his thing now, he's more famous for him and his girlfriend fighting each other than he is for his own music. Okay, nobody is. You can't even name me like five Blueface songs, or at least I can. I, I'm gonna tell you that right now. So. He's built his career off of fighting his girl, and his girl has built her career off of fighting him. That's that's a toxic relation. That's toxic, okay? And it's a bad image. It sets a bad image for black relationships. So for him to get out there and him to gaslight, like, hey, we did it, we didn't know. Um, we need to understand that Chris Brown, whether you like him or not, he is a very hardworking artist in the industry. And he can't catch a break where he sees other people who are not nearly as talented, not nearly as hardworking, and who've done things when they were much older in their life or who did, who have repeatedly done things, and they're getting passes, and they're not only getting passes, they're getting applause. So I can't get mad at Chris Brown for pointing that out. And I feel like Blueface was gaslighting because Blueface felt like, hey, um, why you got to bring me into it? Come on, keep me out. And I, I would get... Why Blueface would say that, 
but I'm I'm not going to lie that Chris Brown was correct when he said, y'all, the ones who be all like, man, a man should never hit a woman even if she's trying to kill him. Y'all don't say nothing about Blueface. I, I can understand why Chris Brown would say that. Now, Blueface also said bringing up random white people. So I don't know. That, that kind of gave me coonish vibes. I don't know why you caping for these white dudes. Blueface, I don't know what the no, he's not bringing up random white people. These aren't just any mini money mo pick up, pick a white man. This, these are white men who have um charges and histories of assaulting women. And what's interesting is I made a video uh, it, a, a bit based off of white men who hit women. Now, Chris Brown bought up um, what um, he bought up Charlie Sheen, he bought up. Let me see. Who else did he bought up? He bought up Mel Gibson. He bought up Uzi Osborne or Ozzy Osborne. The only thing with that, the only thing with that is that I wish he bought up more white people. Now, he bought it. Those are a few. But uh, I wish he would have bought up like Dana White. I wish he would have bought up a, a couple of people. And I've said this in a video like almost um, a month ago. I bought this up in a previous video that I did when I came to the, when I said the double standard of Dana White and how Dana White is not facing any sort of uh, criticism, any sort of canceling, any cloud over his career, any stain to his career that they tried to do to Chris Brown. And I'm going to play for you guys that clip because it's almost as if I predicted this or I prophesized this. Didn't really see any cancellation. You didn't see any big movement from feminists. In none of the cases of these three men, do you see? Um, the now I want to say when it comes to Chad Wheeler, Chad Wheeler was um, a football player who beat his girlfriend. Okay, almost, almost uh, to death. Okay, almost to death. He almost beat his girlfriend to death. Uh, he uh, he was working for the uh, uh, Philadelphia. I, I'm not sure what team he was working for like that. And I'm I'm not gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. But white boy beat his black girl to death. Feminists who who claim to want to protect black women and who wanna who claim that they want to uh, guard the safety of black women and and protect the, the black girl magic. They didn't say nothing about this. So this story, if you guys didn't know who Chad Wheeler was, this is what this was. Okay. So I'm going to say, give you guys that information. So you guys aren't looking like, Oh, I don't know who he is. Okay. But, and I am going to link that video in the comments section below. So you guys can check that out. If you haven't done so them putting them on front street, the same way they did Chris Brown, Rihanna didn't wind up getting any life-threatening injuries or anything like that. But Chris Brown, to this very day, is getting flack from that, so much so that he can't even perform a Michael Jackson tribute because of things that happened with Chris Brown and Rihanna a decade ago, even though Rihanna said she hit Chris Brown first. And Rihanna has forgiven Chris Brown for that. So uh, Rihanna and Chris Brown have a better relationship than Chris Brown has when it comes to some of these other venues and things like that. They will forever leave that crowd over cloud over Chris Brown's head. But when it comes to these men uh, who were much older at the time when they assaulted women, when it comes to these men, nobody wants to say anything. These men who have physically harmed women more often and has physically harmed women worse and were older when they did it. Nobody wants to say anything about that, but they're still holding that over Chris Brown's head. They're also holding that over Ray Rice's head, too, with his situation with his wife. Now, what's interesting about my YouTube video and what Chris said is Chris named a few of the white men that I named. OK, Charlie, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen was out giving women AIDS. Charlie Sheen admitted to the fact that he had AIDS and he was having sex, unprotected sex with women and didn't let them know that, which is illegal. That's a crime. You can be charged with attempted murder for that. Okay, so, but they didn't want to say nothing about that. Um, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson has had quite a few things. He's been after quite a few people, okay? 
um, in his career, and they didn't make that be a stain on him. So I've, I've predicted some of the same things. Dana White publicly on video, all right? And there's been no consequences for him doing that with, when it comes to women at all. So I can understand, and I'm glad that Chris has said it. Whether you agree with it, Chris, whether you like him or not, whether you agree with the way he handled it or not, it's a good thing that we're starting to see and we're starting to break out because it's now a trend because you have the situation with, and this is not related, but kind of, so follow me. You have the situation with Kyrie Irving. You have the situation with Chris Brown. Um, uh, you even have the situation with Dave Chappelle. You have situations, and, and how they're related is because these are black men who have worked and built success for themselves. And when black men work and build success for themselves, especially in the entertainment, the, the dominant society wants the black man to work, uh, walk on this like tight rope where you got to be very you you as a black man in the industry you have to be very you have to be the most careful not to offend anybody not to do anything you you're you're so you're on such thin ice that the second you say something it's over for you okay and what's what all these three men have in common is the fact that they faced um controversy and they said you know what um i'm not gonna be apologetic about it uh that's i mean those situations are very different situations but the fact that they're all like okay y'all telling me one thing and i'm not going to spend the rest of my days apologizing to you guys now um in the case of you know uh chris not chris brown in the case of kyrie irving and dave Chappelle, they weren't even wrong you know what i'm saying but the fact of the matter is is that in the industry, when it comes to black people, specifically and especially black men, they make me like, does it matter if you're wrong or not? You're still going to have to apologize for it. And they're not doing that. So I'm glad to start to see this trend of black men being all like, you know what? I'm I'm done apologizing for stuff. Um, I'm going to call out the hypocrisy. Y'all being bogus. All right. So that's a good thing to start to see. Now, whether you agree with Chris Brown uh, with his reaction, because I'm my personal opinion, I think that the reaction was a little bit much. However, I have not built up the career that Chris Brown has, despite the cloud lingering over his career. So I can understand that looking at that, that's probably just this big explosion, this big buildup of I'm so frustrated with y'all in this talking point in this narrative that no, it seems like I'm the only man in the industry that has to live like this and nobody else has to live like this. I can understand that. And I can do, be honest. I can understand him blowing up about it. And I'm glad that he did. And it's about time that a uh, artist, a big famous artist broke through, the, like broke the glass. Okay. And started having the conversation about, okay, um, y'all going to start treating these white dudes the same way y'all treat the black ones or, or no, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times they like to play the racially blind thing. Well, I'm just going to take accountability for my actions, which you should, but let's, let's, uh, mention the fact that this does a uh, racial element is very much so in play here. OK, it's very much so in play. So I'm glad that he uh, broke that out. I'm glad that he said that as far as Blueface's reaction to it, I can get Blueface being all like, damn, why you got to bring me up? I, I can get that. But I think Blueface was gaslighted. And I think him he and his girlfriend's crazy ass relationship is tripping. And I think that he was gaslighting. So um, I, I feel what Chris Brown was saying. Brothers and sisters, please let me know what you guys think in a uh, comment section below. What do you guys think about Chris Brown's reaction? What do you think about Blueface's reaction? What do you think about the entire subject in general? And uh, please don't forget to follow me on my various social media platforms, which is at Afro Elite on Instagram and at The Afro Elite on Twitter. Also, please, please, please do not forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do not miss out on any future content. Leave a thumbs up and share this on your various social media platforms or to a family or friend. And with that being said, brothers and sisters, be one salute to every single last one of you all. You all have a good one.